marriage is not by luck. Having a good marriage is not by luck. There are many people that think, ah, this marriage thing is luck. Oh. You don't know that you just, it's like picking a box and you don't know what's inside. It's when you get home, you will see what's inside. Uh, that's a lazy man's uh, approach. Marriage is not luck. Of course, there's a part of it that requires God's favor. But the journey to a great marriage, it starts with you, number one, first knowing yourself. Who are you? What kind of person are you? Knowing yourself is crucial to picking the person you want to marry. Many people have not even discovered themselves. Your single years has certain benefits. And one of the benefits of your single years is to discover yourself. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? From the day you marry, your life will never be the same again. So, <laughs> and that can be both positively or negatively. But your life never remains the same from the day you marry. So those single years are like gifts that God gives you to study yourself, to, to invest in yourself. When you study yourself and you see some areas that are not good, you invest in it. You see some areas that are also good, you also invest in it so that it's maximized. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You know what I've discovered? Most of the very successful people I know, they found their purpose before they got married. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Pastor, were you already a pastor before you married? Huh? I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Most very successful people I know, they found the path of their life even before they married. So your single years are not meant to be a waste. They're not meant to be a waste. It's a time you discover yourself, number one, then you discover your purpose. Where are you going in life? What do you want to do? See, Knowing my purpose made it very easy to pick my wife. My wife was not the only fine girl I saw when I was single. At all. There were a few fine girls here and there. But by the time I talked to them for one or two minutes, I can tell that our purposes are not aligned. You need a purpose for life before you pick a partner for life. Come on, say I hear. You need what? A purpose for life before you pick what? A partner for life. If you are looking for a life partner, you first need life. Did you hear what I said? You need to have a life before you look for life partner. Where are you going with your life? What is your personality? You discover yourself. Then what is your purpose? Where are you going in life? You discover that. All these things will help you to choose. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? A good marriage is not luck. It's not luck. A good marriage is like looking for any other thing you are looking for in life. Maybe a house, a job, whatever. If you are looking for a job, when you call your uncle, that uncle, I'm looking for a job. Please, what's the first question he will ask you? Guess now, you can try. What's the first question he will ask you? What did you, what did you study? Do you see now? So, in the thing you are looking for, there are some questions you need to ask yourself so that they can match you and the thing you are looking for. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So many people don't understand. Just say, I'm looking for a job. Great. Looking for a job starts from within you. It doesn't start from job. There's job. We, but we must match you and the job you are looking for. Somebody gets what I'm saying. If you are looking for a house, you just call an agent. Agent, I'm looking for a house. What's one of the first things he will ask you? He will ask you which area. Because if you come in and look for a house, you can be looking for a house in London. I will ask you where. You say, oh, in Portacot. Oh, great. Then I will ask you what type of house. Because there's one bedroom. There's two bedroom. There's duplex. Am I correct? Then I will still ask you self-contained. Then I will still ask you what is your budget. Because house pass house. Hey, somebody's not getting what I'm saying. I say house, pass, house. The first time I went to look for house. <laughs> well, I was already married though. Living, uh, in my, in, then my parents had moved out of Lagos. So we had an empty house. So I was staying there with my wife. I had got married then. I renovated the house. So I was staying there. So we now outgrew the house. 
it was time to rent a bigger house. You know, I never rented a house in my life that time. So I called the agent. I'm looking for a house. It's no problem. They took me to the house. They showed me the house. I said, I like it. It was five bedroom or so with BQ. I said, I like it. How much? When they told me the price, I said, I'm not buying you. Know, it's not to buy. <laughs> it's rent. I want to rent it. All. House, pass, house. Some house are good, but you can't afford it. I need somebody to get what I'm saying. Ah, I'm a car lover. For those that follow me regularly, you know I'm a car lover. I love cars. I'm a car person. Car, pass car. Even shirt, pass shirt. In this part of there was one hotel I came when I came to preach some time ago. I stayed in one hotel. So um, I was looking for a shirt to buy. Because I think one of my shirts was not my size or something funny. So I needed an extra shirt because of the extra session I had to preach in that place. So I went to the boutique inside the hotel. I said, I want to buy a shirt. So when they showed me the shirt and they told me the price, I said, it's not only me that will hear this thing. I said, wait. <laughs> I went to call one of my people. He's even in the service today. I sent him a message. I said, do you want land in Port Harcourt? <laughs> he said, yes. I said, be coming. I want to show you land. <laughs> He was very happy. He thought I was just. He was very happy. When he came, I took him to the boutique. I said, "See land here. This one plus." <laughs> he was shocked. He was laughing because one shirt there was four hundred and fifty thousand. Short sleeve, short sleeve shirt. <laughs> First off, four fifty thousand. I said, "What will happen if I?" <laughs> I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Shirt pass. Shirt. I want shirt. Yes, but not this one. Not this type. Are you getting what I'm saying? So your journey to finding doesn't start outside. It starts from you. There are many categories of husband available. Many categories of wife available. But for us to match you and the one you want, we need to find you. That shirt they are selling, you know, it's just me that can't buy it. They have customer. They, have, they know they are customer. My wife is one always advising me, but I don't hear word. That's before, but now I'm hearing word. Before, I don't used to hear word. One time we're going in London. Jermaine Street was one of the popular shopping streets in London. So we're going there. We saw one shop. The shop was locked. I said, who is doing business and locking his shop? I said, I want to enter. My wife said, look, these people that closed their shop, they know why they closed it. Let's be going. So we passed. When we're coming back again, I said, let me, I want to enter this shop. You didn't allow me to enter. She said, okay, you know women? They said, okay, you want to go, Abby? Go. See, man, when women tell you want to go, Abby, go. Don't go. <laughs> she doesn't mean it. <laughs> she doesn't mean it from all her mind. So I went there. The door was locked. So I pressed bell. Shop. The door is locked. They're answering from intercom. You know this one. They're not looking for anybody. Shop. And other shops are open there. They're always locked. I pressed bell. They, nobody was in the shop floor. They answered me from intercom. Say, hello, how can we help you? I said, I, I'm the one that came to help you. He said, are you not doing business again? They said, we are doing. I said, I want to buy. They said, okay, just a minute. Then one person came. See, when sales boy is salesman, you know there's trouble. And the salesman, his dressing is more than your own. You know you can't buy anything in this place. <laughs> the salesman came out. Salesman, full man. Well-dressed, more than me. You know what they're selling in the, in the place? You know cufflinks? This thing they used to hold shirt. That's what they're selling there. So I saw it in glass. They say, yes, can I help you? I say, yes, I want to buy. He say, good. Say, which one do I want? I pointed one. He said, oh, this is nice. Um, it's 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds. Coughlin, not shirt, oh. as in this thing that we used to hold shirt. I'd be like, mmm. The man think I'm considering it. He said, we have other ones. Check this other one. He doesn't know what I'm thinking. Is how we leave this place now. It's what I'm thinking because I enter with confidence. How are we go out with humility? It's how what I'm thinking. It's not, I'm not, I've made up my mind already that I can't buy anything here. It's how I will tell you now. With the way I disturb you to call you. How I will tell you I'm not buying. My wife didn't follow me. She's outside. This woman. She was outside waiting for me. She said, the thing where you want, you define. Your eye goes, I'm going. <laughs> she didn't come and save me. The man was showing me more. I said, it's not really more about more. My mind, I'm saying, it's not more I want to see. It's how I will go. That I don't know. 10,000 pounds. How much is that today in Naira? Pounds are about 700 naira now. So, eh, what do you call it? 6.8 6. million for coffee. So, 
If, you, if your covering is 6.8 million, what shirt are you going to wear it with? If I buy that type, I won't wear a shirt. I'll just wear only the covering. Because you need to ask me what's wrong. So I will explain to you that, see, the thing I buy. All my money has finished. No money for shirt. It's only covering and cover. <laughs> so covering, pass. Covering. So you don't say, I want to marry. I want to marry. We need to find you. Wife, pass wife. Husband, pass husband. There are different categories available. I get what I'm saying, somebody. There are different types available. So let's find you. What do you want? What do you need in a husband or a wife? Because some husband, I've noticed as a counselor, some husband that some people can marry, somebody else will marry them and be very happy. I'm a counselor. There are people I've seen, they were dating from beginning to day. They were fighting every day. We will settle correct. They settle correct. They now broke up. Somebody else will just come marry the person till tomorrow. No one counseling. Because there's a better fit. There's a better fit. Somebody you are complaining about, somebody will marry that person very happily. You say, ah, she cannot dress well. Somebody is okay with it. So that's why you must not marry somebody you don't like. You are taking on that person's thing that somebody will like. Then you'll not be calling us to come and be correcting what you don't like. Some people call, call me on the phone, counseling. They say, hey, Pastor, uh, there's a girl I'm dating. Uh, she doesn't, wear, she doesn't wear, wear a ring. She doesn't do hair. Help me tell her. I say, you saw her. Sometimes it's the opposite. Maybe she's even doing hair and she's wearing a ring. And the man came from a church where, they don't, where women don't wear a ring. Women don't wear hair. She will not tell me, Pastor, this girl, I want to marry her. But tell her, I want her to stop wearing trousers. I want her to stop wearing hair. I want her to stop wearing hair. I say, you saw her. The way she was. You didn't. And all the guests in your own church that believe what you believe, you don't want that one. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? The journey to finding someone is first finding you. For me, for instance, I couldn't marry somebody that didn't have a spiritual foundation. I'm not the one that will be teaching you the Bible say, the Bible say. Mm -mm. I've never had to tell my wife, the Bible say, uh, wife, submit to your husband. Never had to tell her. We both have already had a spiritual foundation. I never did tell her, uh, come and serve in my church. Come and join the department in my church. You need to serve God. No. I, I could never have liked a woman that was not serving in church. I can't like you. Not that other people might like you. Me, I can't like you. My job involves service of people. If you can't even practice serving people, how can we now serve the generation? And if somebody gets what I'm saying. So my wife was already in children's church in her own church before we met and married. I can't now be chasing you. I'm not telling you, read your Bible now. You know you have to pray now. I mean, it can't work. It can't work. I can't be teaching you that. Many people, you want to marry somebody, you're the one that we're dragging about. He doesn't even go to church. You're the one that is convincing him that, you know, church is good. Ah! It can't work for me at my level. I didn't need somebody I'll be quoting scripture to. I need somebody that, no matter what I'm saying, we both already know that the foundation for everything we are saying and doing is scripture. I don't have to be quoting it for you. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying, sir. Some people, you just want to see convincing him. That you need to go to church. You are still reading Malachi 3 to him that the Bible says you pay tight. Really? Somebody that is robbing God is you, you know, Rob. <laughs> Jesus died for him. He still can't give tight. It's you. You have not even died. <laughs> you think he will serve you? I don't know if somebody is getting what I'm saying. We've never had those kind of discussions in my house. That should we pay tight? If anything, say we give, we, we empty our accounts regularly. And we have emptied our accounts in millions. It's not, and it wasn't a discussion. No family meeting. It was simple, honey. I think we should give this thing. Thank you. Amen. Go. Finish. And these are, these are emptying our accounts in millions. In millions. For the kingdom. Not uh, before you even give 10, 100,000 naira. There's family meeting. And you long discussion and argument. Why it is pastor sitting money. It is, uh, we don't know where the money is going. All kinds of rubbish argument people are arguing. To find the right person, you must first be the right person. A wrong person can't find the right person. Are you here, somebody? If you want to buy a car, who do you go and, a second-hand car or Tokumba car, who do you call to help you to look at it? Eh? You want to buy a car, who do you carry to go and check the car out? Is it your baba? Is your baba a bad person? He's not a bad person, but he's not the right person to give you advice on buying a car. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Your baba can advise you on haircut. But if you want to buy a car, especially a second-hand car, a Tukumba car, you need a mechanic. He's equipped. So the right person is the one that can make the right choice. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
Thank you for the two people clapping there. <laughs> car, pass car. Number two, don't be desperate. You see, many people are desperate to marry because they've not even found themselves. When you find yourself, you will know your value. Something you don't value is what you push out. There is nothing value that is easy to, valuable that is easy to get. There is nothing valuable that is what? Easy to get. Know your value. And everybody doesn't have to know your value, but you need to know your value. Nobody will increase your value for you. Have you ever gone to the market and priced something? You say, how much is this speaker? They say 100,000. Then the person pricing, they say, can I give you 120,000? Have you seen it before? Whenever you call your price, what do people do? They bring it down. Nobody increases your value. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Nobody increases your value. It's you that we hold your own value. When you as a woman, you are chasing a man, you are reducing your value. When you are acting desperate, he has not even finished talking, you have agreed. If somebody gets what I'm saying, hold your value. Everybody doesn't have to agree with it. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is your job to protect your value. No need for desperation. Glory to God. If you are valuable, you won't allow people to drive you. Hmm. Men will just be telling you, uh, I need to test drive what I want to marry. You are not a car. You have a soul. Every sexual relations affect your soul. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? And even in car, it's not every car that test drive. Again, like I said, I'm a car lover. Whenever I travel abroad, my wife goes shopping. Me, I don't like shopping. What I do is I will go to car shops. And be checking them out, inspecting them. And the one they allow me to test drive, I'll test drive. There's a way to do it. You dress well. <laughs> Talk well. Investigate the car before you go. So when you get there, you say, ah, is this the GTS? Yes, 1921 model, the V8. But then I talk to the man, say, yes, yes. He say, open it. <laughs> he doesn't know what. He say, this man knows this. He open it. You sit down. Start it. I like it. Oh, I like the sound. This is the so-and-so engine. Yeah, okay, good. Let's test it. He will say, okay, let's go. Because you still look like a serious person. Don't go there like this. Please, can I see it? Mm -mm. <laughs> they will drive you. So in my journey of enjoying testing cars, because I'm a car lover, I'm a car lover. So I'll test the cars, drive the cars. One day. <laughs> I enter Ferrari shop. Ferrari shop, the cheap ones, are about $250,000. Cheap, the smaller ones. I enter the shop, nobody answer me. Everybody was doing their work. I already knew there's a problem. <laughs> because normal shop, when I enter, somebody's even come to me, hello, good afternoon, can we help you? This one, I enter, nobody even look up. Their customers are not plenty like that. By the time I was calling them, they, you see the reluctance. They didn't even want to answer me. They say, my brother, if you want to buy this, you buy. If you don't, I just used my own mind. I went home. When they didn't answer you, can you tell them to test drive? You want to test drive car? People that have not answered you. <laughs> I went for one car show in Dubai. The car show, they came to display cars. So I was going all around all the cars, entering all of them, starting it. In now reach one part, I wanted to enter. They block it. I said, ah, it's not car show. Are you not here to display? They say, are you invited? I said, invited to waiting. <laughs> they say, all their customers have special invites. People that come to see the car. They stopped me home. When you hold your value, people have no choice but to agree with it. Maintain your value. You are valuable. Come on, tell your neighbor you are valuable. In case they don't like you, say yourself, I'm valuable. So find yourself, find your purpose, find God. Because there's a part of it that God plays. See, finding a wife or husband is not by power. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I say it's not by what? Power. When we were young in the Lord, we used to read Proverbs 18, I think verse 22 or so, that said, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains herself. So we assumed that the mean we should go about finding. 
that scripture was largely describing the experience of somebody that has found a wife. It wasn't really talking about the process that they used to find the wife. If somebody gets what I'm saying. But we assume that what they meant was go about finding. My brother, I've suffered in this the looking for wife matter. I went around Lagos. I even appointed scouts in different churches. All the big churches. I had friends there that were scouts. I said, if you see any fine Christian, get born again one or real one, call me. <laughs> because I thought the finding matter was a manual finding. Listen, it's not by power, it's not by might. You can't physically find the right kind of spouse. Even though, yes, you must find, but it's not by power. If you look at Proverbs, um, I think, um, I can't remember now, it's 21 or so, where it says, houses and wealth are something you inherit from your father. He said, but a prudent wife comes from the Lord. Ah, I was surprised. He said, you can inherit house. You can inherit money. But said that prudent wife, oh, there's only one authorized dealer. They say it's the Lord. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, virtuous woman who can find. So you can't find it. It's not by your hustle. Yes, you must keep your eyes open. You must watch and pray. But there's a part of God connecting you with that person. You see, that's how Adam found. Adam was keeping his eyes open, but there's a part that God brought Eve. So God presented her. God allowed them to meet. Even though it was Adam that chose finally. But God made the connection happen. I pray for people here. Every single under the sound of my voice. God will bring divine connection your way. You have been finding. Maybe you are already past the age. I decree today by virtue of the anointed. There will be divine connection in the name of Jesus. So it's not by power. God is the one that orchestrates great marriages. God is the best matchmaker. Dating sites can never be as good as God. Are you here, somebody? All right. I will also share a bit from my book, Who Should I Marry? People ask me that all the time. Who should I marry? Good question. Like I said, the process of finding starts with you knowing yourself, then knowing the qualities you should look out for. When you know the qualities to look out for, it's easier to recognize the person when you find them. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? When you know the qualities you are looking for, it's easier to recognize the person when you find them. Do you know why many people have not received what they are praying for? They don't even know what they are praying for. Some of you, the answer to your prayer have passed you one day. Sometimes the answer to your prayer can even greet you and shake you. But because you don't even know what you are looking for. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. I was in my office one day. One lady came to see me. This was many years ago. So I was younger than this. I was very young then. The person said, I came to see Pastor Kingsley. So I was in the reception that day. I don't know what I was doing in the reception, but I was talking to the front desk people. So the person came. So I'm looking for Pastor Kingsley. I said, I'm the one. Can I help you? The woman said, please. I'm serious. I'm looking for Pastor Kingsley. <laughs> I said, I'm the one. Now, I looked younger than that. She said, look, I came from a far place. I'm not here to joke. When I saw that she was getting angry, I said, okay, no problem. Talk to the receptionist. So I went inside my office. So she filled form. They brought the form to me. I said she should come. They brought her, secretary brought her with the form. They opened the door. She entered my office. She sees me. I said, I told you I'm the one. <laughs> I'm still the one here. <laughs> I'm the one. Why was she shouting? She didn't know who she was looking for. So I feel you, the answer to your prayer has already passed you before. But by virtue of today's unction, it will pass you again. The difference that this time you will recognize it. If you don't know the qualities you are looking for, how do you recognize the person when you see them? 